This is Gerard G. Stroh and Starlight G recording. This is my crazy stereo PA music system. This is a JVC QL Y5F direct dry fully automatic turntable. I bought this turntable about 30 years ago at a Goodwill store for 50 bucks. The tone arm is fully electronically controlled, including the tracking force and the anti-skating. And it looks like a dream. And I have a an Otofon 2M blue cartridge on that turntable with a an Audio Technica super high-end head shell, fully adjustable. This turntable is fully automatic. These are my pre shawness Scepters and Irish 8s studio monitor speakers. They are powered. And then I got another pair on the other side. Now this is my dream turntable. I like a lot. It's an old vintage Pioneer PL600 fully automatic direct drive. And this is my Audio Technica AT. 33SA moving coil cartridge with the same type of head shell that was on the JVC and down below and underneath there you, I have a ProJet XLR moving coil phono stage it is the Phonobox RS series that has all XLR inputs and outputs plus RCA inputs and outputs. This is my pre shonus IO Station 24 interface slash fader port. More about my crazy stereo PA music system. And I have two of these Pioneer PL200s direct drive turntail that I modified for 78 playback. That Forna cartridge is a 1949 GE VR2 moving magnet cartridge and it sounds great then back here I have another 78 turntable and these turntables are fully modified to play 78 the cartridge I'm using is a Otofon 2M78 mono cartridge with Otofon hair shell. Then I have another turntable up here. I don't use it all the time, but it's rigged up so it'll play a 15 speed vinyl record and, and I got a Christmas record that plays it that I could play on this turntable and of course these are my real to real machines got an old 80-8 TAC I got a lot of TAC machines And this here is a Pioneer. Uh, I think it's called, if I can see the name. I think it's a 1012L 4-track 
It's not fully hooked up yet. But all the TX are hooked up. I bought Studio Style, three sets of Stuvox NAB wheel hubs. They're a markoff of the Studio brand on Amazon.com. And I only use the best tapes on, on these machines. Then here I have a an Allen Heath GL3300 40 channel mission dash and I got a steel on it. I only pay a couple hundred bucks for it and there's nothing wrong with it. It's like brand new shape. And it's tell you what, it's very quiet. This mission console came out of a church and they were getting rid of it for 200 bucks so I, I end up getting it. Can't beat that. There's all my mic pre's that I use. And my system also has I got three uh, XLR patch bays that I made myself. Strictly all studio gear. There's the other stack. Here's my 21 inch shove woofer. I got six shove woofers in the front room. I got an 18 and a 21 inch shove woofer. And these are my power amps down here for the shove woofer. Got them both bridge. So if I crank it up full volume, I'll be putting out 5,000 watts of power. But of course I don't turn up that high. It probably pop the breaker if I do. And for EQ and crossover, I use two PA2 dry rack uh, processors. There's three band EQ, compression, crossover. They're kind of pricey. And one last thing I'm gonna mention I was watching Anna Dialogue YouTube channel and I got this idea from Guido on his channel of this. I bought these super heavy large cutting boards, solid wood. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to get hit over the head on one of these, they're super heavy. And the middle turntable I got four of those, uh, what they call ISO acoustics, uh, Aria, Fandango, uh, four pucks underneath the two cutting boards down here. And it, it helps down on the feedback. And on the JVC, I don't need them because the JVC turntable has good feet on it. And one last thing, uh, all these turntables have XLR outputs on them because I don't like to deal with RCA jacks because you know how the, those can be. And cause I got two computer systems hooked up and that's what I use for a monitor, my 70 five inch TV. The steak deck you see here, this is my um, 1967 MPEX AG440 
this tape deck you have to let it warm up a while but after you let it warm up for about 20 minutes the sound quality is out of this world it sounds it, it beats the sound of vinyl records I, I ain't kidding and the, I have it set up for half inch tape and it's a four track there's the four track heads on there this came out of a recording studio so th this is my system bye from Gerard <laughs>